Two weeks later, NHRA's Traveling Acceleration Show arrived at Gainesville Raceway for the Mac Tools Gator Nationals, and what a crowd showed up to greet them. A huge turnout, fans from all over the Northeast and the Southeast, and the temperature got turned up early on in qualifying, as a matter of fact. Up against the Smoke and Joe's car of Gordy Bonin was Del Worsham, one of the youngest drivers to ever win an NHRA title from Southern California, the family hot rod. His father, Chuck, the crew chief, Steve, I don't know whether this was a portent of things to come later in the year, but Worsham had mechanical problems. As Bonin streaked through to the finish line, the fire broke out underneath the body of the Worsham family Osmobile. Dell was uninjured in this blazing incident. Boy, this gets old fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, Steve. I haven't had too good of a year yet, and uh, this, isn't what I, this isn't what I was looking for when I got here. I know you use a little breathing apparatus for emergencies that you designed. Did uh, did you use it here? Yeah, I got two big breaths of air that I wouldn't have got otherwise, and uh, and everything worked great. You know, I'm just I, I hate to have to use it. But in the semifinals, Casey Spurlock up against Chuck Edgels, we were to see a fire that made Dell Worship's incident look like a thick lighter. Watch the far lane. Unlike Dell's, which happened while he was coasting along, the Etchell's things blew up at speed, right at the finish line. Unbelievable. Chuck got it up against the rail. The scrub off some speed. The safety safari was there immediately, but this car was virtually destroyed. It was one of the worst ones anyone's had in a long time. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, Steve. Thanks. Breathing is usually the biggest problem in those deals. Well, it shocked me, you know, because it looked like we were starting to drive away from him, and all of a sudden, bang. Not good. It was good for Ronnie Swearingen, the crew chief for KC Spurlock. In the first four races of the year, he's been in two final rounds, but this time his opponent was John Force, and Force beginning to show the kind of performance that he would display for the rest of the year. This race was decided on the starting line as Spurlock left four thousandths of a second too soon. Force won it. Hey, I think we're in the points lead. And the nightmare continues, kiddies. <laughs> John had the points lead after Gainesville with Spurlock second, Hoffman in third, Chuck Etchell's fourth, and Cruz Pedregon number five. Those five guys have battled it out all year long. Well, the fires weren't just in the funny car category. The good air at Gainesville, the excellent grip, put a strain on everybody's power plant. Watch Michael Brotherton. We have ignition. Brotherton unheard of the incident. Now, Bobby Baldwin from California. Another bit of a flamer. Kenny Bernstein was putting in a new engine every single round. This was the third engine he blew up and just qualified. Oil all over the racetrack. Deep depression for Dale Armstrong. Even Bernstein was trying to cheer him up. Dale, get over it, son. In the semifinals, it was Scott Coletta and Bernstein. Again, David in eliminations. An engine use every round. Kenny ended up qualifying in the number nine spot with a 489. Here he was up against the national record holder. We were riding on board the Budweiser King as he flamed another one. Scott won it. Over in Connie Coletta's pit area, he would race his son Scott in the finals. What would he do to win? Connie, what are you in mischief here uh, contemplating? You look deep in thought. Well, all of a sudden you're looking at the ETs from the round before, and uh, he's got a tenth on me. And they run 10 miles an hour faster. <laughs> and I'm just trying to figure out how many people over there would be mad at me if I took the car away from him before the last round. Just like you did when he was a kid. I know it. One advantage when you're the wallet of the team, you can just about do anything you want. But at the starting line, father and son once again. You betcha. Age before beauty. Connie off the mark first. Scott was never really even in it. And the old man spanks him with a 479. Just make the check out to the bounty hunter. Any bank in Ypsilanti will cash it, right? That's it. That'll work. A 479. You left first. Sorry, Scott, but you did. Oh, well. <laughs> it's his turn this time. My turn next time. It was my turn last time. Scott Coletta held on to his points lead, followed by Amato as Dad Connie climbed up to third. Corey McLenathan fourth, and Shelly Anderson rounded out the top five in top fuel. 
When we got into pro stock, we found us a new player in the final fourth. Jim Yates and his Pontiac from the state of Virginia had run very well in 93, never won a race, but was starting to really be a factor. And here he was in the summons up against Warren Johnson. Yates had qualified in the number four spot. WJ was the leader in qualifying, and he used that power from the GM Performance Parts Osmobile to win this semifinal round race with a 7-12 to a losing 7-15. Well, Wayne County Speed Shop hates it when the two Dodgers have to face each other, and it's not the final. This was the final four. They just didn't qualify correctly to make it happen. Alderman and Jeffrey on again. Remember, Jeffrey on one in Phoenix. And at this time, the near lane, Daryl Alderman at 7.09 to Jeffrey on 7.13. Alderman showing big speed at 196. Final round, Warren Johnson against another Dodge. This time, Daryl Alderman. He beat Jeffrey on the previous race in the final round. Could he handle Alderman? He handled him easily when Alderman beat himself by leaving the starting line too soon. WJ wins at a 7.13. And he knows about pushing the lights. You know, every so often when you're trying hard as heck out there, you're going to get one of those things. And if you don't get one once, well, you aren't trying hard enough. Well, Dave, when the racers got to Rockingham for the non-point but cash-rich Winston Select Invitational, they were greeted by a brand-new racetrack. Steve Earwood and Roy Hill, the owners of the racetrack, had spent a whole lot of money, and it paid off with some great numbers, the best this venerable old facility had ever seen. But watch this in qualifying. In the lengthening shadows of a Friday afternoon, Warren Johnson's Oldsmobile is the car to watch. After all that success in Gainesville, Warren had himself a bit of an anxious moment. Let's just watch. Uh, oops. Doink. Uh, pardon me. Warren saved it. He wasn't all that upset. Some good things had happened, too. This has been a rather eventful weekend. You run the fastest speed in history at 197. You hit the wall doing it. You're probably going to get 10 grand as a low qualifier, and now there's still a race tomorrow. Yeah, it's been a, an enjoyable weekend so far. Of course, this wasn't very bad. It was just a little flesh wound on it. On that run, he ran a 7.05, and as Steve said, 197 miles an hour plus. But those pesky dodges prevailed through eliminations. And in the final round, it was Alderman and Jeffrey on. Again, our dueling onboard Gamry. If you're riding now with Scott Jeffrey on there, Daryl Alderman. Alderman just cleaned his clock on the lights and went up with a 716 to a quicker 713. Scott hates that. Every driver does. That's hard on your ego when you beat on a whole shot. But they still offered congratulations and condolences at the finish line. Well, here was one qualifying run, a funny car that went a lot better than Warren Johnson's in pro stock. Al Hoffman. In the far lane, became $10,000 richer when he got closer to the fours than he had ever been at 502, number one, and the speed. That got the boys excited on the starting line. 300.80 miles per hour. It was rehabilitation time, not for John Force, but for Chuck Etchell. It was just a few weeks earlier that Etchell burnt the Kendall GT1 Dodge to the ground down in Gainesville. And here at Rockingham, he smoked the tires in a display of power. Force was forced to shut off. Hoffman is out. Cruz is out. Force is out. Life is good, Chuck. Well, I don't know. It, we obviously didn't run that good at smoking tires real hard upstairs. Yeah, but you're still around. Yeah, we're still here, you know, uh, and we'll just try and be here at the end of the day. I mean, it's one round at a time, and... Uh, I sat up there earlier when they were introducing all the drivers. You know, we're here. We love running fourth. We're here to have some fun, and we're having some fun. <laughs> so am I. Well, that fun continued into the final round where he faced KC Spurlock. And Edgels may not have been on his game at the starting line, but his crew chief, John Medland, had the Dodge running very strong as he was able to prevail over Spurlock. Still smoking the tires in the middle, indicating too much power. But it was Etchell's winning a 529 to a losing 539. And on the top fuel final, Don Perdome, Corey Mack. A little bit of a burn down, reminiscent of Houston. The crew tells Corey to stage last, but Perdome, he just breaks his will. Corey in, snake in. Corey too soon, snake win. 
494 at 288 miles an hour. Put the money in Don Perdome's sack at the Winston Select Final. Nick, after that little staging battle, I thought we might have some words down here, all our pro stock, but no. No, it was fine. It was fine. I was just waiting for him to go in, and I set my, my you car. You were wait a long time, Well, though. I wait a little bit, but, you know, that's the way it goes. I want to say hi to my wife, Lynn. I wish she was here. It's great.